Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mayan and I'm a software engineer at DKANS and building some cool stuff at like NativeS. So NativeS is the open source uh, universal UI component library and I'm one of the core developer as Yashashvi mentioned. So I've been working with NativeS from past seven to eight months and today here I'm going to discuss about the potential of headless CMS as a low code tool. I have actually narrowed down the topic of low code, no code to that of a content management system. And we'll also like broaden the term CMS to include virtual site builders, which are currently like moving and blending to traditional tools. So let's start with what is CMS. Considering the fact that more than 78 million websites are built with one. So what is it? So it is a software that helps user create, manage, and modify the content on a website without, without the need for specialized technical knowledge. It helps you build a website without need to write all the code from scratch or even know how to write the code. So like creating web pages or storing images, handling navigation, it takes care for, like, of all for you. So you just need to focus on more forward facing parts of your website. It's basically, it's basically a dashboard where you simply like uh, drag and drop the elements, customize it as per your need and then publish. So that's it, no need, no need to write HTML or CSS. So here are some of the benefits of using CMS. First is uh, no coding, as I said, no technical knowledge required. Then comes uh, user friendly. It's simply drag and drop, so anyone can use it. Then quick deployment, again, easy to maintain, cost efficient and extendable extendable as uh, it provides you with uh, lots of plugins and extensions so it's seo friendly it will handle all your uh, meta tags and meta properties for you and it comes with a pre-designed -de pre templates so it gives a head start while starting a new project these are some of the famous cms platforms available out there uh, like wordpress then hubspot drupal uh, joomla strapi Contentful, WooCommerce, WooCommerce, and many more Wix. So WordPress is the most famous one and also most used one among all. Before, uh, so before we get into like headless stuff, let's see about the traditional approach that CMS follows. So traditional CMS comes with a head, it means it provides both the backend admin as well as the frontend user experience. Uh, also from one single code base, so you get a complete like full stack web app uh, within minutes and it's ready to deploy and use. So basically here you configure your admin zone, then you add your content model and customize your design. And as a result, you will end up having a website. So that's what a traditional CMS do. You get a fully placed working website ready to deploy. So, but what about like uh, desktop apps? or mobile apps or smartwatches or ARVR applications or any IoT application that comes in the future. So here, this class of CMS faces an existential challenge. Uh, this has been getting like less and less useful because projects are not real, uh, projects are no longer just about websites. So connected devices have driven the explosion in the number of screens and formats in which content can be displayed. Any single piece of content can be restructured and deployed on multiple devices and multiple platforms. So like traditional CMS are more like a normal editors means they, what you see is what you get, like uh, we say it Visivic editors. So they are not just built to handle this level of complexity. They handle one-to-one -one com uh, content deployment to a single web page and can't handle the support for multi-platforms. All of this, presents a significant challenge for organizations. They are using the old content management system technology, which once it was like advantageous to optimize for a single digital channel, but now it has become a problem. Like uh, they need to maintain all separate copies for different platforms. So it's very in insufficient. And also that doesn't make any sense to keep the same copy of uh, different contents like all together. Using this model, you cannot limit or control content because you don't know where the digital content is going to be like surface next. 
So here comes our savior that is headless CMS. So instead of having like traditional CMS where you configure your model and produce a website, you just need to produce a API which you can page uh, through which you can page your content and consume it wherever you want. Like with this HTTP APIs, you put uh, these different devices and application. So the goal of headless CMS is to the way it manages the content is be able to deliver this into several platforms. So headless CMS. What headless CMS do is it manages and organizes content without connected front end or presentation there. The headless CMS is where your content and assets live. They usually contain uh, like it contains an API to distribute that content to anywhere and everywhere. So it's great for developers as well as front end is not coupled <coughs> with the back end. So they can use their uh, like they have a freedom to choose their framework for building the front end like React or any popular framework. So, and also it's scalable. So, and provides security out of the box. Also, it increases your performance as the resources, its needs is like very less. So, let's assume like uh, if any company wants to make an update to their like landing page, like change their product description or something. So, there should be a way like, uh, they'll change it in one place and the this update will be pushed to everywhere so this is not possible in the old cms so in old cms they will just need to copy paste this same thing to 20 different system so that's the power of headless cms basically it works as the single source of single source of truth to all the company's content and assets it gives you a place to manage edit and modify all at one place by headless because it's omni-channel content like delivery so what headless does is it powers touch point across any platforms and any device then comes the rapid content development this is through api so headless cms like uh, strapi they provides api first approach that makes it lightning fast for any content uh, development like content uploading and all content management so modular content and assets as here the the headless content is not connected to any front end so it becomes modular in its own way so it can be managed and deployed among several platforms without duplicate duplication or like refactoring then comes like limitless integrations this provides like next level digital experience it allows you to connect your content to like multiple like number of services and softwares here are some examples of headless CMS. First is Strapi, Content Pool, and Notion. So here, Notion is not a conventional headless CMS, uh, but it can be used as one. So it was worth mentioning here. So in native base, we have used it for deploying the blocks directly to native base website from Notion. So what Notion basically provides us is with a SDK through which we can fetch our content in front end directly. So today I'll give a short demo about Strapi. Strapi is a headless CMS technology, comes under open source license and leveraging its users to customize its JavaScript based architecture fully. It's API driven and provides an attractive and conversational graphical user interface, which we will see in a few minutes. Some good things about Strapi. So Strapi offers like advanced built-in modules to support all types of major database, including uh, MongoDB, SQLite, Postgres, and MySQL. It also comes with a JWT, JWT authentication system, which authorizes every user before accessing the API. It offers automated documentation to save time. Strapi also comes with webhooks, uh, web, webhooks by default and allows to implement its all minor and principal operations, making the software more stable and also like uh, compatible across all cross platforms. So then Strapi provides an internationalization plugin, uh, like multi-language is one of the best way of increasing your engagement and convert, like increasing your conversion rate and engaging with your users. So that is all provided in Strapi itself. Then comes API customization. So whether it's REST API or like uh, GraphQL API, 
it provides you with an editor where you can like uh, create your schema controllers and models for API. So let's see a small example. Uh, so this is the like complete new project for Stappy I created using this command. So actually, let's assume uh, if I want to make a website like Medium, so where user will have multiple posts and can create multiple blocks, including all images and all. So I'll show a quick demo. Actually, I wanted to do it live here, but the things break. So just to be safe, I have uh, recorded a video and I'll just play it. So this is a complete new project and I'm just booting it for the first time. So yes. Okay, so now it is running on localhost 1337. So before we start, uh, we need to log in at admin. Like Stappy provides authentication for every services and it has like a role based uh, access to all your content. So here I'm I'm logging in as a super admin. So I'll have all the access. So the dashboard that Stappy provides you. So here you can manage your content and also build some content type and access your media and all. So let's create one content type for post. So yes, I'm just giving the name for my collection and here I'm adding the fields. So my post will have the specific title. Then it will have slug. It handles the slug uh, by its own, but here just I'm giving it, uh, I wanted it to be like customized. So then the uh, rich text editor for the content. And then I'll have one banner just for like uh, image, banner image for the blog, yes. So that's it. And I guess I need to add the relationship uh, with the user. So each user will have uh, multiple posts and all. So here I'm creating one relation. It will have like uh, one too many relation, like one user will have multiple posts. So yes, just renaming the field. Which so uh, this whole schema is completed and it is just now restarting the server, basically creating all the models and migrations uh, of the database by its own. So it takes some time, like around five to six seconds. And then it's, so yes. So let's add some content. So here I'm creating a user first. So let's take a random name and random email the user. In some random password. Yes. So currently, no posts are available and giving the role public for the user. So, yes. Now, let's add some posts. So, here I'm creating some basic posts, like giving some title, slug, and content. Uh, this is the asset manager for the strapi so here i am uploading my assets so it's an image and then i'll select it and add it as a banner to my post it's assigning, assigning this block to the user that we just created and then publish okay so now if we go and hit the api so it is giving us this error as the APIs that are provided in Strapi are authenticated. So before accessing that, uh, we need to give them the specific permissions. So for giving permission, we'll go to settings and then role specific permission. So I'm giving all the permissions to the specific post. So yes, now we hit the API again. So here we get all the data, but uh, yes, uh, all the fields are there like titles, log content but the banner image is missing. So for uh, accessing the banner image, we need to pass one extra prop like uh, populate all. So you, using this here, we get all the data, like it has converted the image into several sites by its own. 
and has blurted the URL. So that was Trappy. So yes, that was quick. And like we have done, like set up a model, then created database schema, add controllers, do the migrations, created APIs, then handled the storage and also authentication, then pagination, all of this in just that like five minutes. So that was quick. So that that is one good thing about the Strapi. And the and also like uh, this doesn't need any technical knowledge. So any person can do this. So if any UI developer uh, doesn't have any knowledge of backend, so here and with the help of like graphical user interface, he can create all the APIs and then use it in his front end to create a full stack app. But there are some missing pieces in this headless CMS as well. So let's talk about the developers. So developers will prefer like headless CMS as it gives them freedom to choose the framework of their own and also build their architecture, right? So they also have the thing uh, in which they want their control for the whole code and all. So I guess uh, code developers will prefer headless CMS. If we talk about the content creators, they will prefer a no code solution like a uh, Wix or something because it provides them the visual editing experience. So content creators also want the full control over all their work, basically how to lay out the page, how to design things and also how long the content will be. So it's easier for them if they have the drag and drop functionality, which we have in Wix. And then what about designers? So designers need something which follows their own corporate design system like uh, and also no one can break it so they need some constraint over it so we need a platform which aligns with the goal of all these three actors that is developer content creator and designers so what's the solution so i guess what we really need is a development framework that allows developer to create something great like wix uh, but with our own like uh, design system and also provide some constraints over it so nobody can break it so and this framework should be like great with modern front-end developers like uh, it should contain like it should be built with uh, famous javascript libraries like react and view and also the backend part can be decoupled as a api service so that's it we need to uh, leverage the true potential of a headless cms and make it more powerful by giving it the visual editing experience that it needs. So thank you.